In this video I describe how I make my own long duration in burner PVC case rocket motors. The goal of this project is to have a longer burning motor than you can buy commercially and a lower thrust because I'm going for more of a scale liftoff. And this is going to be used in a finless gimbal stabilized rocket of which I've done a few flights already. So I don't care about several several G's of, of acceleration to take off. I want more of a scale appearance and here's an example of a gimbal that I've used and I've made other gimbals. The motor runs quite well and I've characterized them thoroughly uh, at high rate data logging and the motors I'm showing in this video will come out to be about a D4 motor. The propellant formula is two-thirds potassium nitrate sucrose and one-third classic black powder and the reason for that is I can vary the ratio of black powder to, to sucrose uh, propellant to get different burn rates. And the, the sucrose is uh, 65 35. Classic black powder is 75 15 10. Very basic stuff. Charcoal is actually homemade. You can look that up uh, on the web easily. This is uh, balsa charcoal. I'm also done pine charcoal. And this is uh, cooking the uh, wood outside. Here's the, some of the charcoal. And I'm using spectrocyte stump remover and soil sulfur and just powdered sugar. This is a uh, ball mill made from 4 inch PVC pipe. I'm using 45 caliber lead bullets as the grinding media and a drill and some simple bearings and a little fixture here. It's not really complicated. The ceramic nozzle mix is a 60-30-10 fire clay which is important. I'm not using bentonite clay. Grog and wax. It's heated up and melted and, and blended well. You can see on the left fire clay after firing keeps the shape without erosion. On the right is bentonite kitty litter which you'll hear a lot of people talk about using but it just does not hold up. As you can see here, and a close-up of the uh, bent of the uh, fire clay shows no measurable erosion. This is the powder after ball milling for approximately two hours. In the case I'm using, is Schedule 40 PVC, so-called half inch. The ID is actually about five eighths, and the OD is close about seven eighths. And I'm cutting four inch long pieces. What you've got here on the left is a gauge for measuring how far the little pintle goes up inside past the nozzle. And uh, this is a two-ton hydraulic press I've made using a bottle jack and three-eighths all thread for the four corners and some angle iron for the top. And then the piston on the top is fixed with a cross pin to hold it in place and the jack uh, pushing top thing comes up as I jack. And I've added a rod here to the release mechanism so I can release and lock the, the vise. Throat diameter on these nozzles is uh, 0.10 inches for a KN ratio of about 40 and the burn rate I'm getting at that is about half inch per second. And so the PVC is actually put into a split pipe nipple and secured with hose clamps. And I, paper funnels seem to work a lot better than plastic so they're non-stick. At first I'll put in 4 grams of the nozzle mix and the first die that goes on the top is actually steel but it's got a hole in the middle so that it doesn't damage the nozzle forming pintle on the bottom. And the video shakes a bit because I've got the camera on a cinder block on the same table as the as the press. And what I do is I achieve full pressure and I hold for a few seconds to allow plastic flow and, and density gradients to equilibrate throughout the uh, powder that I'm consolidating. Sometimes it's a bit of a chore to get the uh, thing back off. Now I'll clean out the inside and after I've added my second uh, amount of fire clay mixture, which is about 8 grams total in this case, I use this gauge to see how far the little pintle sticks up and you can see right there that uh, you can see in the close-up also, um, that's going to be the initial cavity for the powder to combust from. And I'm doing about an eighth inch. Now what I'll do is I'll cut one inch squares from a, a cotton cloth. The next die on the top is actually a flat piece. It doesn't have a hole. And I'm just going to be compressing in the propellant powder dry. There's no moisture added to it. It's not a corning process with three or four percent water. I'm relying on tremendous hydraulic pressure here to consolidate. And uh, therefore the little forming die on the top, you see the one with the hole there, this guy is flat and these are brazed together using three-eighths nuts and washers and whatnot. But I say brazing, not soldering, but brazing. The, uh, the important thing is that die is slightly undersized and that's why I use the cotton uh, wad over. It's not unlike using a paper or a cloth patch with a muzzle loading ball and a muzzle loader.
that forms a nice tight fit and also keeps the dust from coming back out since I'm compacting dry propellant. And this being a potassium nitrate based propellant, you know, if you do this yourself, you have to follow all the laws and this and that, but you know, you owe it to yourself to take small amounts of the powder and and see how sensitive it is and how to set it off. For the life of me, I've never gotten this powder to, to ignite by hitting it between steel as hard as I can. Um, even sparks from a grill igniter don't seem to do anything to it at all. I think what black powder type mixtures are particularly sensitive to are iron sparks because the iron does a thermite type reaction with sulfur. It's probably one reason sulfur was historically added to black powder to make it sensitive to iron sparks for a flintlock type firearm. But don't quote me on this, I'm just saying that simple static electricity discharge from a grill igniter doesn't seem to ignite this powder. And in any case, you should understand the sensitivity of your propellant. Know what you're working with. Now in the background, to the left of my left arm there, you may see a bag of ammonium perchlorate now and then. That has nothing to do with this video. These, these mixtures uh, I'm doing here are purely potassium nitrate oxidizer. Now after the last of the propellants added, you see the hard top of the grain and that's after cleaning out a little bit of loose powder. Now I'm going to use a total of six grams of more of the fire clay mix and this also has grog so it's got some bite and it bites into the PVC pipe. Because this is a plug motor, there's no ejection charge. And you'll have to add the six grams of fire clay mixture in about two or three portions. And I'm going near the limit of this press, I'm quite sure. Not the press itself. The press seems to be stronger than the hydraulic ram, but it's only a two-ton ram. And that's after six grams of clay has been added. Take off the hose clamps, of course. And you'll see that the PVC pipe is kind of tight in the uh, steel pipe nipple, so I'll use a flat blade screwdriver and a vise. And if you do a twisting motion, that wrenches open the, the steel just enough. You can pull the motor case out. Now, the forming die for the nozzle will still be stuck pretty firmly. Um, so yeah, sticking that in a vise like that and twisting it gently, it'll come free. And it's got a really hard, waxy appearance. It sets up much harder. Fire clay sets up much harder than bentonite kitty litter clay. I do not recommend bentonite kitty litter clay. Go to a ceramic shop and get your hand on some fire clay. You'll, you'll save yourself a lot of aggravation.